Ubuntu 18.04 finally released out into the wild, ditching Unity and bringing us GNOME, GNOME, however you want to say it, and some other cool features. So in this video, I will cover my top eight-ish things to do after installing Ubuntu 18.04, and let's jump in right after this. Useful tech education and gaming nostalgia that won't put you to sleep. Get subscribed and turn on notifications so you won't miss the next guide. I'm Eples Vox here to make tech easier and more fun, and Ubuntu 18.04 has finally released into the wild, ditching 32-bit support, at least for the core distro. The uh, branches for like Kubuntu and Xubuntu and things like that have, of course, still released with 32-bit installers, but the core release is now 64-bit only, has a little bit of higher requirements, but brings a little bit of upgrade to the table. So here are my eight things you should do after installing 18.04. Number one, as always, is of course to check for updates, because by the time you install and update it or upgrade your system, there's probably more updates to go to. So of course open the terminal or open the software updater, sudo apt get update, and sudo apt get upgrade. Check for updates, check for upgrades, and you're good to go. But then number two is to go ahead and install the media codecs, because if you're like me and rush through the installer, you don't always install it, or I run a lot of installs in VMs where the auto installer does not install the media codecs, Go ahead and drop the command you see on screen or in the description below. Install all your media codecs, get media playback functionality back, the usual. But number three is where it starts to get exciting, is you can now install what's called GNOME Tweaks. It used to be called the GNOME Tweak Tool, which gives you a little bit more functionality into customizing GNOME. Ubuntu has switched from the Unity Desktop Manager to GNOME 3, which is kind of favorable in my opinion, although I only really... I really liked GNOME back in the GNOME 2 days of Ubuntu, like way in like 2007 maybe. Uh, I, I wasn't a fan of Unity, but with GNOME 3, you can now use the GNOME Tweak tool, or just Tweaks is what they're calling it. And not all of the customizations work anymore from the software, but a lot of it does, which allows you to customize your theme, your icon theme, your cursor, uh, some settings about the dash bar, things like that. Install it, start customizing, because you're going to want to tweak this a little bit to your liking. Number four is to enable, which I don't understand why this isn't enabled by default, but to enable clicking on an icon on the dock causes it to minimize. Again, should have been enabled by default, but it's not. So you can enable it by typing in in the terminal command g settings set org.gnome.shell.extensions.-dash-dash-to-dash click dash action minimize. Or you can just copy paste from the description because typing that from my writing is not going to work out well for you. But hitting that in the terminal, and as long as it goes through, now when you click on an icon of an open window in the dock, it will minimize it to the dock as normal expected functionality that somehow isn't even in the settings. Enable that. You can also take advantage of GNOME extensions, which are really cool things. They're kind of like the panel widgets and things like that of previous versions, but this allows you to add some pretty neat functionality to your GNOME desktop manager, including weather widgets, you can customize how it looks, and there's even an extensions extension, which lets you manually enable and disable extensions. I have links to a couple of my favorite GNOME extensions, and maybe I'll do a separate video on it in the description down below. Uh, and there's a, you want the browser extent, <laughs> how many times am I gonna say extension? There's a browser add-on for Firefox, which allows you to easily install the GNOME extension. Go ahead and add that with this then you can go on and add them to your system and enable and disable as well. Add some cool functionality. You can install some custom themes which actually require you restarting the computer and then choosing that as if you were choosing a different desktop manager session, se session at least for this community theme that I really, really like. Uh, so command for that here and then restart and then at the login screen There's a little settings cog next to the login button and choose gnome with community theme Looks a lot nicer just a minor upgrade, but looks quite a bit nicer and of course you can try out classic gnome there and You can install some other desktop managers if you need, but I'm gonna stick with this for now You can pick up a new wallpaper from somewhere like alpha.wallhaven.cc or your favorite wallpaper site I love the wallpaper setting they include with Ubuntu, and I would never want them to change the kind of feel they go go for with it. 
but I pretty much always want to change it immediately. Number seven is to set up Snap or Flatpak. These are new package managers, program distribution methods for new for Ubuntu and for Linux distros. Snap is really cool because it's really quick and you can install them very quickly and it's kind of integrated into the Ubuntu software store now. However, it does, re it does rely on distro specific proprietary repositories, which a lot of people are not happy with. Whereas Flatpak is from what I've come to understand is basically distro agnostic like it it will it runs the same on most distros and doesn't require proprietary PPAs in order to get your software sources from. And so the installation process is a little more tedious. They have a quick start guide up on their site. I'll show here, which a lot you got to run a couple installers to set it up. And then you have to tell it to load it every time from your browser, even though I say don't ask me again, it still has to do that. But it's a much cooler way, and that's how I'm getting most of my software is from Flatpak. So I will have links to that in the description below. I definitely recommend setting it up instead of using the older repository-based installations. And lastly, if and lastly, if you are on a modern high-resolution monitor, check out the new high DPI scaling. I realize this this has been worked on over time for quite a while, but Ubuntu, just base Ubuntu with GNOME and Kubuntu with KDE look amazing at 4k and now if you go to settings displays and where you, your resolution is you now have scaling options at 4k they only have 100 percent 200 percent and 300 percent there's not anywhere like in between 100 and 200 which may be a problem for some but 200 percent looks super clean looks really nice is very usable and it even works for ultra ride resolutions i tried the 3840 by 1600 which is the new lg close to 4k ultra wide that they just released as well as 3440 by 1440 which is the standard ultra wide 1440p and it looks great at both of those as well so these have been my top eight i'm, I'm honing up 10 top eight things that you should do after installing ubuntu 1804 if you have anything else you'd like to suggest that people do uh, leave that in the comments down below hit the like button if you enjoyed links and code for everything will be in the description below as always subscribe for more awesome tech content i'm Vox, and i'll see you in the next one